Let's talk about continuity of a function on an interval. Continuity on an interval. And so uh, you should already be familiar with how to describe the continuity of a function at a particular value. So um, before we get into an interval, we need to talk about um, continuity from the left and continuity from the right. So let's talk about continuity from the left or right first. So uh, continuity at a value means continuity from both sides. So if we say um, f is continuous from f is continuous from the right of a value. Let's say f is continuous from the right of a. Well, that means that means that the limit as x approaches a from the right of f of x equals the output of the function at a. So instead of just approaching a from both sides, we approach a from the right. And if that limit equals the output of the function, then the function is continuous from the right of a. So a picture of that might look something like this. Say, say this is your a value, right? And your function does this kind of thing. This function is continuous from the right of a. Because as x approaches a from the right, we keep getting closer and closer to the actual output of the function at a. Now it's not continuous at a from both sides because the left side of the limit doesn't even exist. The function is not defined on the left side of a. So similarly, we could, we could do the same thing for, uh, from, the, from the left. So I'll, I'll put, I don't need to rewrite all of this. So f is continuous from the left of a if the limit as x approaches a from the left equals the output at a. And you can imagine a similar type of graph. If this is a, then maybe the graph does something like this, right? As x approaches a from the left, we keep getting infinitely close to the actual output at a. All right, so that's left and right continuity. No big deal. But that is key to understanding uh, continuity on intervals, OK? So, so let's start with the simplest type of interval. Let's start with an open interval. Continuity on an open interval. And these terms, open and closed intervals, uh, need to become very familiar with. They'll be used in a lot of theorems and a lot of definitions throughout calculus and uh, various forms of analysis if you go on further with your education. So continuity on an open interval. So we say f is continuous on an open interval means it's an interval of numbers where the endpoints of the interval are not included. So you use parentheses. It's interval notation is what it is. So f is continuous on the open interval from a to b if f is continuous if f is continuous for all for all x values in that open interval okay so if you pick any value in here so um, in other words the limit uh, let's let's call this x sub 0 x naught okay as x approaches x sub 0 of f of x, that should equal f of x sub 0. Right, x sub 0 is a constant, OK? Any constant in this interval is x gets close to that, the limit of the y values gets close to the output at that constant. This is the definition of continuity at a value. This should be true for all x naught 
in the interval from A to B, okay? So, no big deal. If, if you were to draw a picture of a graph of this, um, maybe it would look like, let's say here's A, here's B, and open circle there, open circle there, and your graph does this type of thing. So this function is continuous on the open interval from A to B because no matter what x sub zero that you choose, no matter what x sub zero you choose between these, the limit from both sides equals the output of the function. There's no gap right there. In fact, that's true for any x sub zero between A and B. Okay, so that's, that's continuity on an open interval, very simple. It just means it's continuous at every point in that interval, every x value in that interval. Let's look at continuity on, uh, let's call it a half closed interval. Continuity on a, continuity on a half closed interval. And so the way we'll describe that is we'll say f is continuous, f is continuous on this interval. Let's say it starts out open, it's half open, but then it's closed at b. All right, so that's not a completely open interval. We'll call it half closed. So f is continuous on this interval if it's continuous on the open interval, right? In other words, it's continuous for every value between A and B. And then what about B though? B should be included somehow. So when you have an end point of your interval that's included, then in this case, since the function is defined to the left of B, it has to be continuous from the left of B, all right? So it's continuous for everything between A and B, and then it's continuous from the left of B. So if you were to draw a picture of this, let's say here's A, here's B, we might have an open circle, then it's all smooth, no gaps, and then when it gets to B, it's a closed circle. So you could pick any, any value between A and B, and you can see it's continuous. Now notice, this function is not continuous at B. Not continuous at B. When you say a function is continuous at a value, that means from both sides. So if your end point has a bracket, it's not necessarily continuous from both sides. But we know, because it's the right end point, it better be continuous from the left. So your limit approaches your output from the left only. Okay. So it's continuous between and from the left of your right end point. You can do the same thing with a half closed interval where your left end point is included. This would be a closed circle. You'd have to say it's continuous from the right of that end point. So I won't write all that down. It's the same idea. I also won't write down a fully closed interval because that's similar. It'll be continuous between. So it'll be continuous on the open interval. And it's continuous from the right of the left end point and from the left of the right end point, okay? So that's continuity on various types of intervals. Let's, let's look at a, a really good example of this. Um, investigate, investigate the continuity of f of x equals the square root of 4 minus x, okay? So in this case, in this case, we know that if I want the limit of this function, so um, if I pick any a value in the interval, this, this, by the way, means is an element of, or is in. If I pick any a in the interval from negative infinity to four, let's not include four. 
no matter what a value I choose here, then the limit as x approaches that a value, you can investigate some of these. Um, for example, I could choose 2, right, for my a value, because 2 is in this interval. If I take the limit as x approaches any of those a values, then I can, I can take the limit by doing direct substitution. I can plug my a into the function to get the limit, because this will calculate nicely. I, won't, I don't have any issues. The only issues I'd have is if I were plugging in a number bigger than 4, because 4 minus something bigger would be a negative, and a square root of a negative would be imaginary. That limit would not exist. But as long as I choose numbers smaller than 4, I don't have to worry about that. So in other words, as x approaches any of these a values, I can calculate it by direct substitution. And the square root of 4 minus a is literally the same thing as f of a. By definition, it's, it's the function evaluated at a. So therefore, f is continuous on this open interval. Right? I could pick any value from this interval, and I know it's continuous at those values, so it's continuous on the interval. But you can see the end point of 4. Let's investigate what happens at 4. We already know that we can't choose numbers to the right of 4. So let's look at the limit, the limit as x approaches 4 from the left. Let's choose numbers slightly less than 4. Well, as long as I choose numbers less than 4, I can calculate my limit by direct substitution. So that's going to be the square root of 4 minus 4, which is 0. And that's also the same thing as f of 4. Okay. Now that's only true because I'm coming from the left. I could, I could plug it in. If I were coming from the right, if I were using numbers slightly bigger than 4, this, I couldn't evaluate my limit by direct substitution, so it doesn't work. But because this is true, because the limit from the left equals the output, I can say that f is continuous. And the, the language here is f is continuous from, well, it's from the left, from the left of 4. Okay? And then when I put those two, those two conclusions together, Right, when I put those two conclusions together, f is continuous on this open interval, and f is continuous from the left of this endpoint, I can say, finally, f is continuous on the half-closed interval from negative infinity to 4 with a bracket, because it's continuous from the left of 4 and it's continuous from everything up to 4. All right? So there's a bit of discussion about continuity of a function on an interval. Uh, we investigated open intervals. That's pretty straightforward if it's continuous at all the values in the open interval. And then we investigated continuity from the left or right of an endpoint uh, based on what type of endpoint it is.